Hello and welcome to season two of Gendered Equality Talks hosted by CNS. In these talks, we hear from people on the front lines striving for gender justice worldwide. Global voices demanding that progress must be on track to deliver SDG 5 gender equality by 2030. These talks cover a range of issues around gender justice. We have with us today Abhina Aher, transgender activist from India. Welcome, Abhina. Abhina currently works with APCOM Foundation in Bangkok as community leadership and human rights officer. She has done path-breaking work on health and human rights and gender justice over the last two decades. Abhina founded the organization Transgender Welfare, Equity and Empowerment Trust. She founded Dancing Queens, a group of transgender dancers. She's done some path-breaking work around dignity, rights and livelihood for transgenders. Welcome Abhina, so happy you're with us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sumita ji. Thank you for your kind introduction. And I'm really happy to be part of uh, this uh, conversation uh, because I'm associated with CNA for some amount of time and working very, very closely with all the member of uh, Mr. Bobby, uh, Shobha Madam, you know, uh, for a very, very long period of time, especially around, uh, you know, HIV work, uh, key populations. And I'm really excited to be part of it here in APCOM. We are the largest uh, LGBTI network uh, in Asia Pacific, and uh, we mainly work on HIV work and LGBTI work. Uh, so we work at the national level, which is in Thailand, regional level, which is Asia Pacific, and we also contribute to the global agenda uh, on certain important aspects. So we work very, very closely with UN organizations like UNAIDS um, uh, on 95, 95, 95. We also work very, very closely uh, on human rights organization, WHO, um, and uh, we have more than uh, several countries who are part of our work. So I'm quite excited to be part of this conversation. Lovely. Excellent. So wonderful to hear. So, uh, Abhina, like we are at the midpoint of uh, the SDGs right now. And, uh, you know, given all the work that you do, uh, do you think that the world is on track to deliver uh, the SDG 5 on gender equality? Um, Sunita ji, I just feel that it's a very uphill climb at this point of time. What we need to understand is that the world has still not been able to unpack the real meaning of gender. For people who come from a very layman perspective, for them, gender is all about uh, dealing with uh, women, dealing with uh, uh, young girls, and that's what their parameter is about uh, gender response. But gender is much, way much more uh, intense and uh, you you talk about multifaceted aspect when it comes to gender uh, related aspects. We have to talk about vulnerable populations, like for example, people who are living with HIV, people who are into sex work, people who are disabled, people who are uh, you know maybe uh, discriminated because of the caste and culture, which is a big thing right now. Um, and also uh, you know LGBT women uh, uh, particularly. Uh, trans women, particularly gender diverse people, who are not uh, being able to address at this point of time. So I understand we are halfway right now on gender work when it comes to the SDG. However, that work is not holistic, and that work is not, uh, uh, you know, multifaceted, addressing the deep dive issues of uh, gender aspects. So we still need to do very important three things. One is right, unpack the gender, so increase our horizons on gender response. Second is understanding the structural barriers uh, for gender uh, equity. When I'm saying equity, not equality, is because there are a lot of populations who are left behind and they are not been able to access the services that they really deserve, uh, including healthcare, public transport, uh, human rights, social welfare, uh, dignity uh, in general in a society to live uh, with uh, with with the uh, with the right that they. Uh, have there are a lot of communities were still criminalized right and third thing is that the most important thing is that uh, giving a meaningful engagement uh, to the gender affected individuals uh, especially young people uh, who are uh, you know part of gender response how do they take the ownership because we are all struggling with one of the important aspects that we 
it has been challenging across the globe for all of us is sustaining the work on SDG, right? Uh, we can do things, but who is who's going to sustain that once you achieve it? So there has to be a cyclical process where you keep continuing the work that you are doing and the next generation has to own it up uh, when it comes to sustainability uh, for on, your, on gender response. Excellent. So you said sustaining it is a challenge. The work that you know we are doing, that will be one of the key challenges. Yeah, one of the thing is that sort of unpacking the gender. So, you know, having more holistic approach, non-biased, non-discriminated approach, uh, zero stigma uh, towards uh, people who are affected by gender inequalities, uh, you know, making sure that they decriminalize and they are being able to right. access their human rights fully. Uh, and third thing is, of course, uh, to do with, uh, you know, a larger aspect about uh, reaching to that level where we talk about SDGs achieved and then sustaining that achievement yes. for the next generation. Those are the three things. Lovely. Great. So, um, in all of this, these things what are the key challenges uh, that you see over the next uh, you know um, the next 19 months so one of the things our policies are not you know uniform right in the region they are not uniform across the countries um, uh, so one of the things the, the other thing is that socio economical barriers that uh, that women especially uh, face because of the social upbringing and uh, socio and uh, socio cultural uh, perspective. So you, so certain countries can have very progressive policies, but the women themselves do not have courage to come out and claim uh, the gender equity that they really deserve. We are still struggling at the workplace with pay parity. We are still struggling uh, with work with uh, workplace inclusion for people who are not belong to LGBTI community, trans people. So that is a big, big challenge. And the other big, uh, big, big roadblock that I see it across is that uh, especially in our region when we talk about Asia right uh, the population is highest right I mean we we cover the maximum portion of the global um, population but the quality of life for people uh, quality of health quality of uh, you know social natural resources uh, which include nutrition good water uh, sanitation, good health is not been appropriately delivered uh, as per the governments that they promise many times in, in semi, uh, semi uh, you know, developed countries and developing countries, many times uh, government do not show the required accountability. So they will go to the big, big meetings and they will promise in front of other global leader. But when they will come back to their countries, they will fail to deliver what is supposed to be delivered and that is the bigger challenge we need right now people who will do walk the talk we need people right now who will keep the promise uh, that they have towards uh, sdg and then the last thing i wanted to talk about is that uh, this particular uh, millennium that we are doing this particular decade that we are living with we are living with a huge uncertainty right there are a lot of wars there are a lot of uh, political instability, uh, poverty, hunger. And in those situations, the gender equality on prioritization are, is left behind. So we, they might will work on say maybe like on poverty or something, but for them gender equality may come last because those are not, that, that is not a fancy SDG that they would like to connect with. And the last thing I want to talk about it, Sunita ji is that Gender equi uh, equity uh, as uh, SDG is connected with other SDGs and that correlation we never managed to establish. So like for example, gender equity is connected with poverty, education, good, uh, good health, uh, inequality, eradication, uh, you know, and all those things are not uh, been, been addressed appropriately when it comes to, so right now we really need a holistic approach. And we need, we need an approach probably uh, which will have more ownership, uh, not only from the government, but as a country together. Uh, because government can just create a policy, but policies don't make change mindset of people. What you need is a social movement 
and that social movement is many times missing when it comes to gender equality. Yes, so true. And like you were saying, I mean, gender equality is uh, crucial uh, because then it is affecting all the other SDGs. So, uh, you know, whether it's poverty or whether it's health and you know, all of them. Right. So uh, you said this whole thing about policy. You spoke about accountability and the uh, need of changing mindsets and you know, creating a social movement, so to speak. So. Um, the, you know, as you know, the Women Deliver Conference is uh, the largest, one of the largest conferences on gender equality is happening later this month in uh, Kigali, Rwanda. So I was just wondering, uh, what is your uh, expectation from this conference? And uh, do you think that, uh, you know, it will, uh, uh, you know, help create inclusive spaces, foster solidarity, find sustainable solutions for gender equality? <clears throat> See, I have a lot of hopes from this conference because I'm sure there are a lot of powerful women, feminist movement uh, people who will participate in those discussions. I think what we need to do is create a special resources for gender equality, which is missing out big times, right? We have these resources for health, we have resources for uh, other is is aspects, but who will work on it? Who takes the accountability? Like these conferences, we can just talk about framework, barriers, but what we need in a big way is the action on ground. And to do that, we need to have a specific resources on gender equality advocacy. And we also need um, specific resources on creating uh, more focused uh, strategic programs that will ensure the gender equality, that will ensure the gender inclusion meaningful way. Uh, in, in the countries that uh, are impacted by uh, social impact. And I also feel that is, uh, you know, what I expect is that there will be a lot of evidence that will be generated from these conferences that we can use it for evidence-based advocacy at the global level. Uh, uh, sorry, can you say that again, please? I missed it. I'm That's saying that we also need to have a lot of, I hope we also manage to gather a lot of stories, a uh, lot of evidences, data uh, on gender index, uh, particularly on these conferences that can be really helpful for the organization like CNS to push forward on gender equality through the evidence-based advocacy, which is missing right now. We just talk about our issues, but we don't give real numbers to people. As a result of that, people don't understand the magnitude of challenges that we are facing because of that lack of gender equality. Uh, so that is a very important thing. So I also, oh, I'm very hopeful from this conference is that they bring diverse women. Uh, I hope they include women with color. They, I hope they include women with disability, women living with HIV, sex workers, women who are into drug use. So I, I feel whenever such kind of discussion happens, there's always this focus on good women, right? Good women are the women who are in a part of society, uh, who will fit into the social norms of the structures, and all the women that don't don't fit uh, into those structures are not invited for those discussions, especially trans women, uh, because a lot of women don't consider them as women, uh, and their entire journey is all about you know kind of getting their acceptance as as real women, right? And I think that is where uh, we have to we have to derive strength from each other's struggle. I don't think so. Anybody's struggle is bigger or lesser uh, compared to each other. So I, I feel that there's a lot of uh, expectations that I have from these conferences, but I hope these conferences do not just lead to the discussions, but they actually come forward uh, doing something globally, right? Uh, there, is, yeah. there, are, there, is, there is a movement called as She Decide. I remember I was part of it. Uh, they have done a lot of interventions with parliament, parliamentarians and stakeholders and other things. Um, there are certain organizations that are specifically working with women who are from tribal areas, deprived women. But I just feel that uh, we need to have a global movement building on this and we need to have a create platform at the regional level, at global level, where these diverse women can come together and create a common agenda for pushing this last mile for achieving on gender equality for the SDG. Otherwise, we might will be able to miss that bus. Lovely. Thank you so much.
thank you. It was such a pleasure talking to you and so many, uh, you know, uh, great insights that you have offered on this. Um, really, and uh, you know what we spoke about, action is just so important so that we just don't keep talking, but we also do something that leads to action on the ground. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Avina. Thank you so much. You were listening to Gender Equality Talks hosted by CNS featuring Abhina Aghir, transgender activist from India. Until next time, thank you for listening and participating in this dialogue to demand progress on SDG 5 for gender equality. Thank you and bye-bye for now.